Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm and today I want to give you guys some great tips on how to plant sunflower seeds in your gardens. So um, if we haven't met yet, my name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. We're planting zone six and I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip video. Okay, now that that's out of the way. So a lot of you have asked me tons of questions about sunflowers. We grow a ton of sunflowers here at Cranberry Fields Flower Farm, and we grow a huge variety of them. So we grow like really super tall ones, and we grow the beautiful ones that you see in the bouquets that like we ship nationwide, and we grow the little tiny like chubby teddy bearish ones that are like just adorable. So we grow like a ton of different ones. We grow ones that are branching, that have like maybe like five or six or seven different sunflowers coming off of one stem that's called a branching variety. And we grow like the single stems uh, that have just like that, uh, that one flower head on them. So I wanna kind of demystify the whole uh, sunflower field story and, and answer some of the most popular questions that I've gotten throughout the years. So um, I'm gonna, I have a little cheat sheet here like I usually do. So um, let's start by saying, I wanted to say thank you to uh, Mara Lisa. Now this is her Instagram tag name. And she had put in a question on Instagram actually about hydrangeas. So she had a hydrangea question saying, should we remove the uh, leaves from the bottom of hydrangeas this time of year? And the answer to that question was yes, definitely, you know, get those dead leaves out of the bottom of it, not the leaves, on the plant, but like the fall leaves that might've fallen from trees around it, get in there and clean that out because that hydrangea needs a lot of aeration around the base. But then she said, um, hey, is there a place where like we can post our pictures on Instagram uh, from our gardens? So I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. So if you guys wanna show each other and me your pictures of your beautiful flowers in your gardens on Instagram, let's use hashtag Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe and then we can all take a look at each other's flowers that way. Um, a lot of you are now over on my Facebook group doing that, you're sharing your flowers and you're sharing your garden questions and you're answering each other's questions on the Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. So that's like a really fun place to go and hang out and get involved in like a lot of garden chats. So I will put a link in descriptions below for that Facebook group. Once again, it's called Kelly Lehman Flower Tribe and it's Facebook group. And if you want to also show us your pictures on Instagram, thanks to uh, Marilisa, we're going to start doing Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe. Uh, do the hashtag first and then post your pictures there and we can pop over and check out each other's garden challenges and successes. So, you know, also show me the stuff that's not coming up so great. Because if you guys can post pictures of your flowers that are, are, are failing or there's like a problem with your hydrangeas, it's kind of easy or easier for us to diagnose what the problem is and how to help you if you post a picture. And I welcome all the suggestions that the Flower Tribe has been giving each other. That's so great. You guys are a terrific flower family. Okay, so let's dive right in. So spring is a terrific time to plant your sunflower seeds. And you want to wait until the ground warms up. I know that it's like super warm in some areas, like right now in Cranberry, New Jersey, where like I said, a, a planting zone six, I think it's gonna get up to like 70 degrees today. So it feels like it's summer. So like, you know, the first inclination is, let me get out there, start my flowers, get them going. But I'm gonna tell you that, that the best thing to do is to hold off. I usually wait until uh, a little bit after Mother's Day here in New Jersey to start any kind of direct seeding uh, into the farm. And that's because a lot of times we'll get like a cold snap. I was talking to um, a garden company that was in uh, Utah yesterday and I was like, hey, what's going on with the weather by you? And he's like, well, we're getting snow today. He said it was like 70 degrees like a few days ago and they're getting snow this week. So sometimes that happens and you want to make sure that you don't have these uh, delicate seeds in the ground and then all of a sudden the ground freezes on top of them. So be patient. Uh, a, a, a workaround to that is to plant your sunflowers inside. So it's okay to plant your sunflowers inside in pots. Uh, just make sure that you have a large enough pot because sunflowers have very large root systems. And so if you're gonna plant them in a pot, make sure that you pick out a sunny area because sunflowers love sun and make sure that you use like, like potting soil. Whenever you're potting plants, you wanna make sure that you don't use 
uh, like very hard, like dense soil. A lot of times, like what's found out, like like in in your ground and in, in the garden, because those seeds kind of need like like some like a little bit of tender loving care if you want to get like easier or, or better results faster. So I would use some potting soil. Uh, make sure that your you know your pot is is large enough to plant your seed, and then you just kind of like poke a hole in the middle with your finger. It's like not, like not an exact science. And usually sunflowers are planted like um, about an inch or two deep. Uh, but you want to take a look at the back of your sunflower packets because there's so many different varieties now. And that packet should tell you, you know, exactly how deep you should plant it and how far the spacing should be. And then just make sure that you water your seed in and you're going to put it in a bright, sunny location. And that's how you can kind of start your sunflowers now in pots. I find that sunflowers, for me anyway, because we do like mass plantings, it's easier for me to direct seed them into the ground because I don't always have uh, great luck transplanting them into the garden. It can totally be done. People do this all the time and they have great success. Uh, but for me, like when you're, when you're like transplanting like hundreds and hundreds of sunflowers, it's just easier for me to wait a little bit longer and just kind of direct seed them right into the ground. So, and when you direct seed them right into the ground, it's the same system. Sunflowers love sun. So you're going to find a sunny place in your garden. Full sun is the best, but if you have a place that gets, uh, you know, like, I don't know, like, like a lot of sun and then maybe some afternoon shade, that should be fine also. Uh, and you're going to find a spot that has well-drained soil. So once again, you're not going to go outside and, uh, you know, sprinkle potting soil all over uh, your ground in the garden. You're going to make sure that the soil is, you know, kind of like nice and chopped up. It's not um, uh, too tightly packed because once again, sunflowers don't like to be sitting in uh, too much water because their legs don't like to be wet. So you don't want to have that tough packed like clay soil. So go into your gardens and, you know, just kind of chop up a nice little area. You can like dump a little bit of water in there and see if it drains out after a couple hours. And, and it should be fine. Most soils, you know, should be fine. Sometimes you have to put some amendments in your soil. If you do find that that water is not draining, after a couple hours, and there's all sorts of information online on, on how to amend your soil, how to make it, you know, have better drainage. Sometimes people will add like organic matter to their planting hole, and that will kind of like, you know, make the soil a little, um, a little more hospitable to the planting. So for the most part, I just go out like on our farm, I'm, I'm very lucky we have some good soil here. I literally go out there, I dig a trench, and we basically just plant them in like one or two inches deep, and then we cover them and, um, and that's it. And then like we'll water them in. And then we make sure that that plant that, you know, that seed has, it stays moist because you want to make sure that the seed has enough water to germinate. It won't germinate and start forming a plant until it has that like moisture. But you also don't want to make sure, you also want to make sure that you don't flood it. So you don't want to keep going out there and then the plant winds up like drowning and then the roots get like a root rot. So just make sure that it's like slightly moist. And a lot of times mother nature takes care of the watering for us here. So um, a lot of times I don't even go out there with like a huge sprinkler system or like all the, the fancy Gijimugu watering things. So um, yeah, so we're going to wind up uh, just, you know, letting mother nature take care of it. And so that's, you know, basically the easy uh, route for planting them outside in your gardens. And just make sure that you have the spacing, uh, you know, like, like, like a pretty decent spacing because sunflowers can get super uh, like wide, especially if you have a branching variety. So sometimes they get super, super wide. Once again, take a look at the back. I have a, a package here from Sunflower Selections. So I'm just taking a look at some of their varieties that they sent like this guy. So our selections is this great garden company. They send me all sorts of beautiful sunflowers. And uh, so like this is like a, a single head giant. So this is going to get like super, super tall. So I'm, I want to make sure that I have enough um, space in my garden to like accommodate this big giant mama. And then they've got other ones uh, that are branching. So this is a Kong branching sunflower. And so the branching sunflowers, like I said, have all those um, smaller heads like coming off of the stem. So you're gonna need like a lot of room for some of those. But then if you have like a pro cut uh, single stem flower that just has the one sunflower on it, you're not gonna need quite as much space. So when I go out into the flower farm and I'm planting them in like mass, like we'll also use like an earthway seeder, which is just like a farming tool that like lets you mass plant. I'll make sure that the sp spacing is about at least six inches apart and that's for like, uh, 
if like the pro cut flowers and you want to make sure that if you want small flower heads, you can plant them closer together. And the story is the flower heads just aren't going to develop as large as they could because they're kind of crammed together. But sometimes that works for me because we put the flowers in bouquets and we can't always have like the big massive heads because they don't trip very well. So if you want smaller, more daintier flower heads, you can just kind of plant them closer together. So we'll do that with some of our flowers and um, make sure that uh, once again, they do have some space though. Like you don't want them too close because you don't want to get any kind of mold or fungal issues. So let's see who's popping on here. I want to say hi to some people. Hi, Leisha from Connecticut. Oh, nice. So you're seeding your front garden this year with sunflowers. Oh, and wildflowers for hummingbirds and bees. I'll figure out uh, what to put there. Yes, I love that idea. And I love, Leisha, that you said that you're planting uh, flowers for pollinators because we're having a real issue with our um, honeybees and you know the bees that pollinate all of the fruit, the fruit crops and the vegetables. So we're having a problem. Uh, I think it's I think it's actually worldwide with not having enough bees to pollinate our food. So if you can set up in your garden uh, pollinator plants, that would be amazing. Um, bees, hummingbirds, uh, butterflies. Uh, all those pollinators love sunflowers. So that's a terrific flower to have in your garden. I know that I grow a ton of uh, zinnias and I grow a ton of celosia and uh, butterfly bushes. So those are all great pollinator plants. And some people even put in what's called like a pollinator garden. And then you can go out there with like your kids and your grand grandkids and you're out there and it's just like this amazing show every day of like honeybees and bumblebees and butterflies and uh, you know, like hummingbirds, it's like a really amazing thing to have. So consider uh, putting in a pollinator garden if you can, like a little section of your garden, because that's really just spectacular. Uh, let me see who else is here. Um, hey, John. Oh, from Brick, New Jersey. You're super close. And who's here from Mount Pleasant, Michigan? Oh, I'm, I'm glad you like my site. Thank you, Sue. My daughter went to University of Michigan. Great state. Uh, who else is here? Hey, uh, hey, Van and, Tom and Tammy Long. Uh, you've been dying to ask for planting branching sunflowers. Oh, super question. So Van and Tammy Long asked, um, I've been dying to ask if you plant branching sunflowers, do you have to plant them in succession? So for those of you that might not have heard of succession planting, that's when you'll plant like, um, like a few sunflowers one week and then you'll wait like say like a week or two and then you'll plant some more and then you'll wait like four weeks later then you'll plant some more and you'll you know so on and so on and what happens is you'll wind up having a continual uh display of color in your gardens because sunflowers for the most part or what I call like the one and done flowers. So once you get that beautiful bloom, or in the case of like branching sunflowers, you'll get like a whole bunch of those blooms. Once those blooms on the sunflower are done, that's it. They're not gonna rebloom. So like zinnias are, you know, repeat bloomers. So when you have zinnias in your garden, you can just deadhead them and another flower will pop up and then you'll deadhead it and another flower will pop up. And that will happen for the entire, like, you know, summer season into fall. But with sunflowers, once that head is gone, that's it. But if you do the succession planting, which I'm so glad you brought that up, you'll have, you know, like your sunflowers will come up, they'll go into bloom, and then uh, that's it, that's it for the season. So you can either wait for them to like kind of droop over and then collect the seeds later on in fall, or you can cut them back. But then the next set is going to wind up, you know, blooming. And then the next set's gonna wind up blooming. So I usually leave my sunflowers that, you know, are spent that we didn't use for our bouquets. I'll leave them in place in uh, the farm, in the garden for the birds to eat. And what happens is they'll wind up eating my sunflower seeds, which is great because then they'll leave the rest of my secret garden alone because sunflowers are packed with those big, beautiful sunflower seeds. And then the rest of the seeds that we have left over at the end of the season, I'll wind up harvesting. And it's super easy to harvest sunflower seeds. Um, I have a video, uh, and I'll, I'll link it later. I forgot to link it on this one, but it tells you how to plant, grow and harvest your sunflowers and the seeds. And the story with harvesting sunflower seeds is you can wait until your seeds, so like the flower head kind of droops over, it's gonna get kind of like um, like a brownish yellowish on the backside of that big flower head. And once it's, you know, sitting in the field, you know, for like a couple of weeks, especially in fall, this is a great time to look at them. They get droopy and then the inside, like the little, I have my little flower t-shirt on, like the inside here starts to get like really swollen with seeds. 
And once you start to kind of scrape away, there's like little florets that are on that like little brown piece over here. <laughs> what a great visual. I have a t-shirt. I should have the sunflower. You'll have like little floret flowers here on this brown. And you can scrape away the little tiny, tiny flowers that are on it. And underneath, they're going to be these big, chunky, juicy seeds. And what you could do is then you just kind of snip the bottom of the sunflower and you can hang it in your garage or someplace in your house or someplace that's kind of cool and dry. And then within a couple of weeks, they get super dry and you just kind of pop them out of um, out of the center. I have like one that was left over here because we had actually harvested most of our seeds. And these guys, I just kind of pop them right out. So they kind of, each of these is like a flower. So each of these seeds I can just pluck out. This was from last season, so they're nice and dry. And let me try to not ruin my computer by doing this over them. But each of these is like a sunflower seed. And I'll show you a better visual here. I have like a whole box in back of me here. And each of these, like we, we just kind of put them right in. We put them like right in brown boxes and we just plant them the next year. And we'll also put them in like little jars and I'll give them, I've been giving some of our sunflower seeds from last year's crop to some of our flower tribe members. A lot of you are helping uh, each other on that Kelly Lehman's flower tribe Facebook group and I'm sending you seeds to say thank you. Thank you for like feeling that question and saving that person's hydrangea because I wasn't able to get to that question first. And I know um, uh, other people are like posting really great funny things like our friend Agnes. And and so, you know, the more you guys, I see you guys popping up there. Sometimes I'll just say, hey, shoot me your address, you know, in, in, in direct messages. And I'll, I want to send you some seeds for helping out the flower tribe. Uh, but I do want to tell you something about uh, these sunflower seeds. So once again, you can you can harvest a ton of them. This This whole bag is filled with sunflower seeds from last year. So we can put them in paper bags, you can put them in boxes. I mean, there's there's like a load of these, all right? So this is like tons and tons and tons. Uh, I'm trying to get my camera right for the end. <laughs> I'm like the worst technical person you've ever seen. So tons and tons of them. But here's the story. The flowers that come up in the following years from the sunflowers that you've harvested are not gonna be true to um, the flowers that you put in the ground. So like I was saying before, I have a friend, his name is Tom. He's over at sunflowerselections.com and he sends me like magnificent seeds. When I harvest my sunflowers, you know, from a field, they're not the same as what the ones that I put in the ground. And that's because all the birds and the pollinators and the bees did cross pollination. So that means that they took like different characteristics from each of my sunflowers and you know, it's almost like they form like a brand new flower when I'm getting these seeds. So if I wanted to get that magnificent, like pro cut orange, perfect flower that you'll see in bouquets, I'm not going to get that uh, the following year. I'm going to get kind of like a mishmash flower. Most of the time they're super pretty, but if like there's particular sunflowers that you love, you should definitely buy fresh seeds then. And uh, once again, sunflowerselections.com is great because the sunflowers that we grow, that we like to ship, that we like to put in our bouquets, we need them to be spectacular. So a lot of times, uh, you know, we'll get our seeds from them for like the, I guess like the prettiest sunflowers. And then the ones that we put back in the ground that we kind of harvested ourselves. listen, they're pretty too and they're super interesting, but sometimes it's really funny. Like I'll get a sunflower that's like, half red and half yellow, or it's got like all these like, you know, crazy, like red stripes coming and orange stripes coming. So it's, it's super fun. I think for a lot of gardeners to do that, but know that if you want that true sunflower that you, you know, originally fell in love with, just, you know, buy some new seeds each year. I mean, they're not, you know, they're not that expensive and you, or you could do a mishmash. You could do like half and half. So, uh, and once again, you know, I mean, the people at Sunflower Selections are terrific. Uh, this isn't a paid advertisement by any means, but when I find a garden company that I love, uh, I like to promote them. So I put their link below. I know a lot of you are buying your sunflower seeds now. So they're just uh, one of, you know, like a terrific sunflower company. And, he's, and Tom's always answering questions for me. So I had asked him a while ago, fertilizer for sunflowers, like, you know, what are they like? A lot of people, you know, were asking, what, what do I put down? So for the most part, I don't use a ton of uh, fertilizer in uh, my flower farm. Like I said, we have really good soil here. We used to have a ton of horses and my neighbor has horses and they come over and visit and graze. So we had a lot of like very like compost rich, manure rich soil to start with. So for the most part, I don't use a ton of fertilizer. However, 
sunflowers are heavy feeders. Like they like to like absorb a lot of those nutrients. So uh, some years I'll find that the sunflower production is not as great as, it, as I would like it to be. And Tom's recommendation was to apply a 10, 20, 10 mixture for your fertilizer. So, um, so it's like the nitrogen, the phosphorus and the potassium, the middle number is your phosphorus. And that is usually what's in charge of giving you like, like good blooms. And so, um, that's why that number is a little bit higher. So he recommended 10, 20, 10, and there's the sunflower grower in uh, my town that also says, I like the 10, 20, 10. Uh, so if you can't find 10, 20, 10, I don't know, I guess you could, you could try the 10, 10, 10, but you might just want to try your first set of like, if you're doing succession planting, see, see how they come up. I mean, if the flowers come up great, you don't want to over fertilize. So, you know, and I'm a really big fan of, you know, less, less is more. So, you know, that the more you leave nature alone, the better your results are probably going to be. So let's see who else is here. Uh, Gina, you're from Connecticut. It's too early. Oh, it's too early to plant. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I know you get like so excited. You want to plant. Well, you could plant them in the house. Uh, I just find that when I plant them in the house, I don't take very good care of them. Like I'm just, I'm the, like the worst. I'm a very bad uh, planter of pots gardener. That's like a, a tag. I'm, I'm so much better when I, I get them in the ground, they're all happy. And then I water them and then they come up. So I'm <laughs> kind of like a no fuss. Um, let me see. So Ashley vibes, like <laughs> I'm saying your name, right? Ashley Vest you're from Florida. Okay, so your video got me inspired to grow sunflowers. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. You planted them on the 6th of April, approximately. Oh, but you're in Florida, so you're, you're all set. You're all set, my friend. How many weeks does it take to germinate? Good question. Sunflowers, in my mind, take a lifetime to, 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 like, to come up, uh, which is not true. It, it takes a few weeks to actually see the sprouts, and they do take a long time. Like I'm, I don't have exact numbers in my head. I'm going to say sometimes they take between like – maybe 50 and 65 days to like get into a full plant. Does anyone know if those numbers are right? <laughs> this is like from my old memory. I just know that they take a really long time. So they might take a few weeks to germinate and you'll see those sprouts. And when you see those sprouts, that's the time that the critters love to get them. So what you might want to do is kind of sprinkle some cayenne pepper around them or some Irish spring soap shavings. We did a whole video, a live video on that like two weeks ago, how to keep the critters out of your garden. You can check that out. That's like on the, the channel here. Um, or sometimes people will take like chicken wire. And if you have like your sunflowers in like this one, you know, spot, like, I don't know, like an area like this, they'll put like little posts, like little bamboo posts or like little wooden dowels or wooden posts. And then they'll lay, sun, uh, they'll lay the chicken wire on top and surround the sides with it and kind of just, you know, anchor it with like a zip tie. And that should keep the critters off of the sunflowers while there's still those sweet tasting sprouts. I don't know if you guys have ever had a uh, salad that has sunflower sprouts on them and they're so sweet and they're delicious. Well, that's the same thing. This is what the animals want. But if you can put that chicken wire, say if like your sprouts are here and you can put the chicken wire up like maybe like a foot or two, by the time they get tall enough to like that one foot, you know, growth, I don't think they're quite as sweet. So chances are uh, the animals may leave them alone. But listen, if animals are hungry enough, they're going to go after them. So it's not like, you know, like a, a no fail, but it will help deter them for a while. So that's the story with the sprouts. Um, let's see. Okay. So Mr. Rogers trolley, I'm having good luck with liquid fence. Yes. Okay. Get the one with green squeeze handle. The other one clogs. Oh, super tip. Thank you. I have to say, I like liquid fence too. I think it smells really bad, doesn't it? But it smells really bad and it keeps um, the deer away. We've had good luck with that. Uh, so that's a terrific tip. So yes, thank you. And thank you guys for giving us, you know, these tips that they're constantly coming in and it, it makes people from all around the world, better gardeners. And it helps like, like thousands of people grow better flowers. So thank you for those tips. They're like absolutely amazing. Um, let's see, uh, Robin Jones deer looks, uh, to eat my Annabelle's. I know me too. Yeah. So the deer ate her animals down to one foot. The same thing happened to me. Super question. Should I recut the ends to promote growth or cut down more or just leave it alone? Will I get more blooms this year? Thanks. All right, Robin. So here's a story. The same exact thing happened to me. So I have a row of like, I don't know, say like eight Annabelles in a row. They decided to eat four of them and they left the other four alone. And so what I did was I went out there. They, they probably ate them down to about two feet. Um, if you just leave them alone, believe it or not, you're going to wind up getting blooms no matter what, because 
Annabelle's are super, super hardy and they just want to bloom. What I do is I kind of shaped mine a little more because mine were kind of like, you know, like they took a bite out of this and they didn't take a bite out of here. So they were kind of scraggly. I just took like clippers on like one of them and then I started getting impatient. So I just took a hedge clipper, which I know some of you might be horrified, but we have so many hydrangeas here that sometimes we just got to get in there and get it done. So I just kind of shaped them with like a hedge trimmer. I just, you know, went over to the top and down and it just kind of smoothed it out into the shape that I wanted. I wouldn't suggest cutting it down to the ground because what happens with the Annabelle hydrangeas is the stems uh, get a little weak if they're like all new growth with no support around them. So if you leave that like a foot that you have left over intact, that will act as a support base for those new fresh stems that are coming in and it will support uh, the weight of your Annabelle's. And the good news is just you're gonna have, probably gonna have giant soccer ball size hydrangeas because when you cut those Annabelle hydrangeas back or like the Incredibles, they'll give you like these big giant bursts of snowball blooms. So um, just be careful because they might need a little bit of like maybe support or, or extra staking with some bamboo around the sides and you can even do some twine around the bamboo if you don't have that support system intact. And guys, I'm making a huge playlist of how to prune your hydrangeas in spring. If you don't know what hydrangea variety you have, do yourself a favor, don't prune them back. Uh, I don't prune back most of mine most years and they come in beautiful. And there's a chance if you prune back your endless summer or your Nico hydrangea now, you're going to wind up cutting off a lot of the blooms that you should have had this summer. So um, hold off for those or just, you know, check out some YouTubes. There's a lot of beautiful YouTubes out there now that tell you all about, you know, how to prune back your hydrangeas. Mine are going to get up there sooner than later. I'm just the world's slowest editor. Uh, so when in doubt, just hold off on the pruning if you're not sure. Uh, let's see. Vanessa Brown. Oh, you're new here. Well, welcome to the Flower Tribe, Vanessa. Love it. Love the information. Thank you. I started my flower seeds in my arrow garden. Oh, terrific. All right. So you're you're kind of all set. You're one step ahead of the gang there. That's terrific. Okay. Uh, Skeletal Steve. I love that. I'm new to planting and your video on Celosia was awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, thanks for the information. So can I plant some for my wife? Yeah, well, you can definitely plant Celosia for your wife because you're going to love you for that. Uh, same thing with Celosia, Zinnia, all those flowers that you kind of saw, you know, the planting videos that I have on this channel. I usually, it's, this, it's almost the same planting instructions as far as uh, find a sunny location, make sure that the soil is well drained, uh, oh no, I don't know why that just happened. Sorry about that guys. How did that even happen? Oh, why am I, <laughs> my own screen just like winked out. Uh, Celosia does not like to be planted deep. And so, oh, I have Celosia seeds here. I can't believe this. I never have the stuff that I, I I'm always like, I wish I would have had that to show them. I went into my flower barn before and I just, just kept grabbing stuff off the shelf. I'm like, do I need this? These are Celosia seeds. So I label them. This is uh, 2020 seeds. And this is what celosia seeds look like. This is so cool. They look like pepper. They look like little like fairy flakes. So check out how tiny these seeds are. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can. I'm gonna hold my hand up better. Once again, I'm such a bad, where is, I don't even know where the camera is on here. Do, can you guys see this? <laughs> the worst. Anyway, let me try to like sprinkle it down. Are you guys getting the gist of this? Where is the camera on this thing? I have no idea. Uh, let me just hold the whole thing up here. Here we go. All right. You can teach an old dog new tricks. So each of those little tiny pepper flakes is a celosia plant. So what you're going to do is when you plant your celosia in the ground, you're going to kind of fluff up the soil. You're going to sprinkle these because it's impossible to plant them one by one. It's literally the size of pepper flakes. And I kind of like scatter them down. And then I cover it very, very loosely with either some super, super fluffy like potting soil uh, or, or some sort of like a, a, like a planting mixture that's super, super delicate and light because they do need to be covered. Otherwise, they won't germinate. There are some seeds, believe it or not, that you don't have to cover with, with uh, soil. They, they need the sun to germinate, but most seeds need to have that little covering of soil and then some water to germinate. But if you plant these like an inch deep, there's a good chance they're not going to come up. So Celosia plant with just a little sprinkling of that soil on top. So that's awesome. And Celosia, oh my God, don't even get me started. To harvest these guys, it's so fun. Like you basically wait for the plant to dry, kind of like we did with um, the sunflowers. They dry in the field. Uh, you go out there in fall, you snip the flower head and you shake it and then all these like thousands and thousands and thousands of seeds come popping off the plant. You have to have like a box underneath you to catch them all. And then each of these is a brand new celosia plant. 
So same thing though, guys, when I plant these gals in my garden from last year, uh, they're not quite as beautiful and spectacular as the ones that you're going to get from the garden companies. So I'll always do like maybe like half and half. I always uh, plant extra seeds from like some of my favorite garden companies. And thank you to, uh, to like some of the, the, the companies that are, have been sending us uh, are the seeds. I think one was like restoration seeds and burpee seeds. And you guys send me a ton of beautiful uh, seeds each year. So if you want those true, true, beautiful celosia, get them from your garden centers or these garden companies. But then it's really fun to like, you know, plant your own also because they do come up and they're super pretty. All right. So that's the story with that. And I also had, let me see who else I had in here. Oh, I wanted to show you this terrific trick. When your sunflowers uh, are in like that harvesting stage, like in fall, now I have like 10,000 celosia seeds. Sheldon's going to come in here and be like, why are there seeds all over this chair in our room? Sunflower stems dry out and they make terrific firewood. So I have a whole bunch of dried out sunflower stems. And I, oh good, the whole box of seeds is gonna fall on me now. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my. So these are all sunflower stems. And you could tell, you know, they're white, they're dried out. I basically tied like a little bit of twine around each of them. So it's almost like a little fire starter kit. So I'll have like five or six of these and, and boom, you have like great fire starters to put underneath, um, you know, the, the logs and the paper in your fireplace. And it's just super fun. And it's kind of good to get these out of the garden because I think sometimes they give off like, I don't know, some sort of like stuff that some plants don't like. So if you can kind of harvest those out in fall and you know, what's a really cute gift idea is to take like, you know, like one of your, like the seeds and put them in like a little jar and you can do like a really cute label. And, um, then you could put like some some fire starter sticks and you could put them in a basket as like a gift basket and you know for crying with like some honey and like a candle and it's like just like a super like thoughtful gift because it comes from your garden so sometimes those are like the best kind so let's see who else is here you know what i did i also brought my glasses today oh no i didn't i thought i brought my glasses oh i did bring my glasses <laughs> i'm sitting on all my props over here so let me just clean these bad boys I'll show you my granny glasses oh this is so much better Okay. Oh no, I'm lying. This is not better. <laughs> this is worse. I know. I wish I could show pictures too. So here's the story. I have pictures of like all these flowers, like on, you know, like on the playlist. So if you kind of scroll through, um, you know, the Kelly Lehman channel, you'll see like all the celosia, you'll see the zinnias that I planted, all the sunflowers that I talked about. I just, I don't grow these guys yet. So I didn't have them here. And the ones at the store, I don't know, e -e, some, some of them, like I, I took a look yesterday, but I didn't love all the stuff that was there. So I'm sorry. Sometimes you got to work with what you got, but I, I do agree. I wish I had the, the flowers here too. Uh, Betty Hansen, Betty Henson said, I've collected the seeds from my dwarf sunflower from last year. Will the new plants from them be dwarf? Excellent question. So um, I don't know. I have a feeling. No, I don't know if dwarf varieties are, um, if they're like, you know, sometimes there's like a more dominant uh, variety. So I don't know if the dwarf ones are going to be, you know, if that's going to be the dominant characteristics, I guess you'll see, but I do love the dwarf varieties. They're super cute. They're like short, like two, three feet. So they're super. Um, hey, rooftop gardening with e Incha. Say hi to everybody. Uh, let's see. Hey, Josie, Keating and Vanessa. So Vanessa says, uh, I'm new here. Welcome to the Flower Tribe. Love the information. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that you love it. So I started my sunflower seeds. Oh, we, we start, talked about you before in your aerial garden. Okay, that's terrific. <laughs> Let's see who else. Uh, when can you put the sunflower seed in the ground in Bergen County? So Bergen County, so you're, you're New Jersey too. So I'm assuming, listen, for most of like the areas that are like planting zone six, I think the rule of thumb, like a little bit after Mother's Day is usually the safety zone because what you're looking to do is to plant your, you know, your seeds in the ground after the threat of frost. So um, double check what your planting zone is. I'm assuming you're close to, to this planting zone and you're gonna make sure that, you know, there's the chances are that there's not gonna be another frost and then you're pretty much good to go. So that's kind of the rule of thumb. And let me see what else I have here. I want to say uh, just a few more things about uh, the pollinator, you know, gardens we talked about, which is super. Um, oh, also guys, when you're harvesting, <clears throat> oh, coffee time. Anybody have a cup of coffee? <laughs> we have to take a break because I have like a frog in my throat. So coffee time quick, grab a quick swig. I have celosia seeds in my coffee right now. So a <laughs> little protein there. When you're 
harvesting your sunflowers to put them in like a vase in your house, it's a really great idea for extra vase life to wait until like the petals just start lifting up. So if you cut the sunflower out of your garden when it's in that beautiful, like full blown open stage, like, you know, on my fancy t-shirt here. So if it's in that full blown open stage, chances are you're only going to get like a couple days out of a vase life from it. But if you can cut it as those little yellow petals are just starting to lift up from like that, that middle disc, then chances are you're going to have it for like a week or a week and a half. So cut them when they just start to lift up, like you'll see like one or two start to lift up. You'll give it like a diagonal cut and you'll put it in some fresh water and you'll put it in your house away from direct sunlight. And you'll have that bloom for like a week, a week and a half, maybe even two weeks. So um, another question that I get asked often is, you know, I received sunflowers as a gift, you know, like an arrangement came in the mail or arrangement came like, you know, from a friend can I use those seeds from those sunflowers that are, you know, in this beautiful arrangement and can I replant them next year? So for the most part, the answer is no, because those seeds haven't matured yet. So what's going to happen with that flower, that sunflower is it's going to, you know, have a base life and then eventually it's going to fade away. But since the, since that flower is not planted in the ground, it's not continuing to grow and develop and mature. So those seeds inside that cut flower, that's kind of like it, like it kind of stunted its growth. So those seeds are never going to get big and thick and plump and juicy, and they probably will not give you sunflower seeds that following year. So uh, let's see. So uh, Rebecca, I love all. Oh, what a cute name. I love, love all. Miss, Miss Love All. Joining from Illinois, Zone 5. Welcome, welcome. Let's see who else is here. From Virginia. Oh, I love that you guys are telling me where you're from. Hi, Hugh Trong. I remember you came, you joined us a couple weeks ago. It was nice to see you again. Um, see who else is here. I'm trying to catch everybody before you kind of disappear. Xavier Sanders. Hi, did I say your name right? <laughs> I hope I said your name right. I'm sorry when I botch your names. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, this is interesting. So Ray 55 Root said, thank you. That's so good to know about the sunflower stems. Our main source of winter heat is our wood burning stove. Oh, that's terrific. Where are you from? Well, I'd love to know where you guys are from. Mexico. Hi, Estella. Nice to see you. Wow, I love that you guys are all over the world. That's so fun to me. So let me check my little cheat sheet to make sure that there's nothing I left out here. Guys, if you have any questions, ask them now before we wrap up. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, some people have asked me, do you have to stake sunflowers? So I don't stake my sunflowers. Um, they're in the field. And since there's like thousands of them growing together, I think that kind of provides like support. And it's also in an area that doesn't get a lot of wind. So if you can kind of find a place to plant your sunflowers, uh, that's either like, you know, like has like the house to protect it or like a fence to protect it, or it's not like a really windy area, that's going to help it. Uh, if you, if you, the only place that you have to plant it is in kind of a windy area. Give it a, give it a shot. But those uh, sunflowers you might need to stake if they're in like a windy area. And that's super easy to do. You could just put some bamboo stakes around them. Like you could find these at like your garden centers or, you know, Home Depot or Lowe's. And you put some stakes around them. And then you could just take some twine and then just kind of wrap it around, you know, like the whole bunch of them. And then when they go to sway, instead of dropping to the ground, that twine's going to kind of catch them and it will kind of just give them some extra support. And sometimes um, with the giant mammoth ones, you're probably going to want to stake the giant mammoth ones because they're like 12, 15 feet tall. And oh, a super fun project to do. Uh, one of my King cousins sent me this. My, my maiden name was King. And my dad had, uh, he comes from a family of 11, like big, you know, Irish Catholic family. So I've got like <laughs> all these cousins all over the place. And every now and then a king cousin will like send me like this planting tip. So one of my king cousins sent me this great tip. It was a sunflower uh, house that was formed by growing like some of these mammoth sunflowers in like this giant circle. I think, I don't know, maybe it was like 20 feet, you know, around. And what the, the people in this blog did was they then took the flower heads and they kind of connected them together with like, you know, twine or some sort of like, you know, string or rope. And they wound up making almost like this, like, like a hut. And then they showed like their kids like playing inside this sunflower house. So how great is that? I'm going to try to do that this summer. So that's kind of like just a fun little project. So thank you, King Cousin, <laughs> who did that. Um, let's see, from Toronto. Hey, Anwar, nice to, nice to see you from Toronto. Um, 
Are sunflowers stronger than lilies? I don't know. That's a good question because lilies are pretty strong. I have a hard time growing lilies. How about you guys? Um, you know what? I haven't really tried them in years. I, I should try them again because they're beautiful. My my wedding flower in my bouquet was stargazer lilies. And listen, I got married in the 80s. So we had those big giant, first of all, my hair was like out to here. And like I had a hair piece that was out to here. And my flowers were stargazers. So it was like this giant mass of, it looks like I'm walking down the aisle with like a garden. But they smell amazing. If you're looking for like a super uh, lily to, grow, to, to, to to like find or have in a bouquet or maybe to grow, uh, ch check out Stargazer and let me know if you guys have any luck with lilies because I'd love to learn how to grow them better. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, can I call you Kelly or can I call you Miss Kelly? You can call me Kelly. <laughs> that's fine. That's very polite of you to ask though. So Vanessa Brown, love it. Oh, that's great. All right. And, and Ra um, Rockers is here. I want to say hi. All right. So guys, let me just see. Let me take one last peek over here. There's different varieties I told you about. Oh, this is really cool. This is like a cool fun fact. I used to be a teacher, so I love these little goofy, like nerdy fun facts. So do you guys remember... Um, uh, heliotropism from like school or like the SAT. So heliotropism is when like a, like a flower will like track the sun. So in my sunflower field, I'll go out there in the morning and when they're, when they're young, when they're just starting to kind of, you know, like just like come up and, and form their, their flower heads and you're just starting to open. And this is especially true with the smaller varieties, not the big giant mammoth ones, but the smaller varieties, they're all facing east when the sun comes up like all of them, it's like this army of sunflowers and they're all like at attention, they're all facing the sun. And as the sun goes from east to west, these flowers will literally, like the army of them, thousands of them, they track the sun with their faces. So you'll see, like if you go out there like at dusk, you'll see all these beautiful thousands of sunflowers, all their heads are now facing the west. It's like mind blowing. Uh, and then you wake up in the morning and you go back out to the field and this army of sunflowers is now facing east again. It's like, you're like, wow, did that really just happen? Uh, but it's really true with the smaller varieties, like the larger heads. I think they're just it's just too heavy for them to do all that work. Uh, but check that out. So if, if you have one of these gardens where you're you're teaching your kids with or you're out there with your grandkids, it's a really fun thing to show them, say, hey, let's, let's, you know, let's check this out throughout the day and see if, if this if heliotropism is happening and then you can help them get into a great college because now they know another SAT question. So, all right, let's see what else. Um, oh, Anwar, you said, love, love the channel. Thank you so much. You mainly came to the channel to gain knowledge on hydrangeas. I'm glad you said that because I have to tell you guys, I love flowers so much, but hydrangeas, I am so partial to that my goal is to be like this, uh, like a specialist in hydrangeas sunflowers and peonies. So those are my go-to go-tos, but I do have to say, I love zinnias and salopia too, but hydrangeas are, and peonies are, and sunflowers are like my three major ones. And I'm trying like each week to learn more and more about them so I can give you guys more and more tips and then you guys can grow more and more of them in your own garden. So it's like a win-win. But um, all right, so once again, please hop over to that Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. Please post pictures of your flowers there. Please post pictures of your garden challenges and please answer each other's questions because um, I can't always get to them and it helps me not feel so guilty for not getting to everybody every week when I know that you guys are kind of taking care of each other. And when you're on there, please make sure that you let us know where you're from because it's really exciting to see when someone's from a different part of the world or like a different state or it's even fun to see when someone's like is in like your own town. You're like, oh my gosh, like there's, um, you know, people from our Facebook group that live in, in oh, this is Agnes again. <laughs> I guess I must have you up like every life. She lives in Heights Town. Like I'm looking to see where she's from. I'm like, really? She lives like a town over from me. So let us know where you're from. Uh, help each other with the questions. And that's terrific. And uh, any uh, any tips on peonies are welcome. All right. Here's the thing. I'll talk, talk forever. But uh, so whoever wants to hang out for a little peony quick chat, I'll give it to you. You can plant peonies in the ground now. It's a well, wait till it warms up. I'm sorry. Wait till it warms up to put your peonies in the ground. Let me rephrase that whole thing. But when you plant your peonies, make sure that you don't plant them too deep. I think the number one reason why most people don't have peony blooms is because they plant them too deep. So when you put them in the ground, if you buy them like this time of year, you're probably going to buy them like in pots from like your garden center store. And they're going to have, you know, the growth on them. They're going to have green leaves. Hopefully you're going to plant that kind of like flush in the ground and you should be able to actually see like the little eyes like where those stems are coming out of you're going to actually see like that exact starting point do not dig a hole 
and then put the peony in the ground and then bury it like two or three inches deep because that's gonna prevent the flowers from blooming. So that's like my number one peony tip. Uh, that's like the number one, and I've made the mistake. It's like the number one peony rookie mistake. And you're like, how come these guys aren't blooming? They're supposed to be so easy. Uh, if you plant your peony that they come in like, you know, like the, the tubers, if you plant them in the fall, the same thing. You're going to put them in the ground. You're going to look for those little tiny, they're like little nubbies. They're, they're called eyes. And you're going to make sure that when you get that in the ground, you're only going to have like an inch or two of soil above that. And that's it. And then uh, don't do what I've also done. I love telling you guys about all these blunders. Um, I've planted them at the right depth. And then I wanted to go help my plants. And I put a ton of mulch on top of them, which was dumb because now they've got like that little, that soil on top of them. And then two inches of mulch. And that will prevent them from blooming also. So just make sure they don't have, you know, too much on top of them. They love aeration and they will love to have mulch around them, but kind of you know, kind of pull back. And this is true for most plants. You don't want to have that mulch going up against the base of the plant. You want it to be pulled back a bit so that it doesn't cause all these like, you know, aeration issues. And it gets like, you know, like a whole bunch of like fungus build up. So pull that mulch away from the base of the plant, you know, maybe like six or eight inches, especially your peonies. And now's a good time to uh, put like a peony stake in if you want. They almost look like it's like a little round circle. And you can see like your peony, like my peonies are coming up in the field now. They're probably like two or three inches or like these beautiful red, you know, pieces of growth. You can put like one of those peony cages around it. Now you can get them at your, your like garden centers. Guys, all these tools that we talked about too, I have an Amazon shop page that I will always put a link to in descriptions below of all of my, most of my videos, like the, the ones going forward. And, um, all these things that we talked about, you can just buy with one click shopping in, on that Amazon page. So you, you could check that out. So you can buy like these peony cages, you, you put them there now. And as the peonies start to come up and the flower heads get super, super heavy, you don't have to worry about the rain knocking them to the ground because these peony support cages will hold them up. So that's like a quick fix. That's like really fun to put up. Uh, Chloe, uh, Chloe Love, you're from Washington. Oh, welcome, welcome. Uh, hi, hi, Fez Endo, did I say that right? Fazendo? Hopefully I said that right. That's nice. I love when you guys say hi to each other. So what else with peonies? All right, peonies, this is a great florist power tip. Peonies, you can cut in what I call the marshmallow stage. And as they're just about to open, they get super soft. Like they start off as like that really like tight, tight marble, but then they get super soft and squishy and they're not quite open yet. If you can cut them in that marshmallowy stage, give them a cut. You can put them, like wrap them in like some craft paper or newspaper and put them in your refrigerator. And literally you can have these gals bloom like a month from the day you cut it, like two weeks, three weeks a month, because it kind of like halts the whole process of it aging. Like I wish you, know, like, we should have something like this, like, you know, they're, they're freezing. They have, what do they call it? Chiro Chir freezing. If you put it in the refrigerator, not a freezer, that's going to kind of keep the temperature like cool enough that the flower is not going to really age that much. And then like, if you have like an event, like a lot of times people will do this if they have like, I know I did it for like my daughter's sweet 16 or like their graduation. Like they wanted these blooms at a time when they would have been gone already. Uh, so if I cut mine in like, say like May, I can put them in the refrigerator in that dry cut marshmallowy stage. And then I take them out like three or four weeks later, cut the bottom of the stems, put them in some water and like they blow open beautifully. So that's like a super great like florist power tip. So it's like a really fun tip too. And you could do that with daffodils too. I noticed that in like Whole Foods or ShopRite, there was all these, you know, they were selling these beautiful daffodil bouquets. And then they had a ton of them that were wrapped just with twine and just like the bottom of the stems were cut off. The, the buds weren't quite open yet. They were just in that really like tight stage and they were tight and you could do the same thing. So you put them in your refrigerator and then I'm going to have some daffodil blooms that are going to wind up pulling out like three or four weeks from now when everyone else's daffodils have already gone. And the same thing with the uh, flowering trees. I have, you can imagine what my, I have like these florist refrigerators and they're just filled with all this crazy stuff. You can cut some of the branches from your ornamental pears, your weeping cherries, uh, your peach trees, and you can cut them now when they're just starting to bud. And like, there's like a little bit of like, they're just about ready to burst open. 
put them in your freezer, dry cut. So once again, they're not hitting water. Make sure that they do not, the bottom of the peony stems don't hit water. The bottom of the daffodil stems don't hit water. The flowering branches don't hit water. Because if you're doing this dry cut method, the reason it's called dry cut is because you didn't plunk them in water. You just cut them dry and then put them in the refrigerator because the water will force them to open up. And then you take those branches out like weeks from now, give it a fresh cut, put it in water and boom, you've got like these gorgeous like ornamental pear blooms in like June and everyone's like, hey, wait a minute, how does she have this like funky display? So now you're in the, the florist now with some of these things. Um, do peonies need a really cold winter? Oh, Hugh, yeah, good question. Do peonies need a really cold winter to perform well? I've lived in Virginia zone seven. Uh, yeah, so here's the story. Uh, peonies do need like a period of cold. So I'm not sure exactly which zones. It depends on the variety too. I think some varieties are better, but for the most part, I think that most peonies do need like that cold period just to kind of function well. But listen, there's so many new varieties out there now. Uh, Google it. Can somebody Google that? <laughs> Flower try. Could someone find the, the, the better answer for that? And um, oh, what types? Okay, so Anwar, what types of spring uh, maintenance would you suggest for hydrangeas? Uh, spring is a great time to add organic compost around the base, and that kind of gets the soil kicked up and ready uh, for you know to like allow those nutrients. Uh, to be transported to the plant better. And spring is a great time to also fertilize your hydrangeas. But like fertilization is like a whole nother, like that's like a whole live. It's like there's so many different, there's so much information out there on, on um, fertilizing your hydrangeas that I would rather just save that for another one because I don't want to give you false information. But I do have to say this. I don't use that much fertilizer on my hydrangeas. And we've got hundreds of them here. And uh, if you're not sure which fertilizer to use, and like if this is your first year with your hydrangea, or like you just, I know a lot of you bought new houses this year, like, yay, new houses. See what, what your hydrangeas do first. Because if they're in a good soil and they're blooming beautifully, leave them alone because most people will wind up over fertilizing their plants, trying to help them. And they wind up adding too much nitrogen to the soil. And what happens is you get those beautiful lush green leaves and no blooms. So, um, so yeah, so be careful with the fertilization game because that can get really, really crazy. Hi, Elizabeth. I love you because you went, hello. I do that a lot with my things. <laughs> I have a friend, Jane, whenever I see her, I go, hello, Jane. So yeah, so that's the story with um with the fertilization. Just I, I know I'm being evasive with the exact fertil fertilizer to tell you to get, but that's going to depend on your hydrangea variety, what your soil is like, uh, and so forth. But I would see first if you can get away with no fertilizer, because that would be key. Once again, you know, super easy, and you you won't you know add too much to the plant. So all right, Ray fifty five roots. You're out on Long Island. I grew up in Sable, Long Island. Wow, New York girl. Yeah. All right. Wow. That's so fun to see that. All right. So listen, guys, I'm going to take off. I'm uh, picking up my daughter uh, from the airport right now. Yay. Look when the kids come in from, uh, from college. So uh, I'm going to keep this, you know, I'll put this live. I'll repost it in case you, you came in like late or in case you want to rewatch it. And um, if you want, check out some of those other videos. I have a ton of videos on how to um, get your hydrangea to bloom. I've got videos that say like, why aren't my hydrangeas blooming? Uh, the, the number one hydrangea video that I have that gets the most views is how to get more blooms from your hydrangea. And we have over like a million views on that. And I think there's like 1600 comments on that video. And it's just, you know, Flower Tribe members and we're swapping tips and, and giving like, you know, online sources to go to and check it out. So how to get, uh, <laughs> I forgot the name of it already, <laughs> how, how to get more blooms from your hydrangea. So check those out. I'm gonna link them below. And there's also tons of sunflower tips. And I'm going to add a lot of peony tips uh, this season. So um, thanks again for joining, everybody. And I will see you all in the next video. Oh, and jump over to our Cranberry Fields Instagram page and say hi there, too. I love when you guys hop over there and say, hey, I just saw you live on, on um, YouTube. It makes me happy. And uh, I, I love to have you guys join us over there because we have a whole different group of uh like, you know, tips over there and different pictures. And I do a Monday inspiration. So I would love to see you on our Cranberry Fields uh, Instagram channel too. So I'll see you guys there. And I'll see you on our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. Okay, that's a mouthful. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'm going to go get Jill. Okay, bye.